Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nick Cardoza here with another episode of Mr. Yachts. I was out with a client showing him boats and it dawned on me that we were a little bit scattered because I want to look at this boat, I want to look at that boat, I want to look at Frybridge, Outboard. And I'm like, look, we got to narrow it down to a certain subset of boats. We can't just be looking all over the place for all kinds of boats because boats are designed usage in mind. If you're going to be fishing, you're going to get a fishing boat, right? So sailing, you're going to sail boat. If you want to go spend a week in the Bahamas, you're going to want a fly bridge with lots of cabins something comfortable, right? Speed's not an issue. You want to go fast, get a cigarette, something like that. So the broker's job in this situation is to educate the buyer or the client. First of all, I like to pick the brain. I like to get to know, get in their head a little bit so I can make decisions on behalf of them, right? So what are you using the boat for? Are you, are you taking your family out? Are you single? Are you trying to go to the restaurant on your boat? If so, you're going to want something with a shallow draft, maybe not so long because you won't fit in so many spots. You want to be an owner operator. If you plan on driving your boat yourself, or you're going to have a captain. A lot of these factors play into what your available options are. Number one, I try to get as much information out of the client as possible. And it starts with showings. You know, I like to try to do this before we show so I don't waste anybody's time. But if you're totally like, you have no idea, then you got to start looking at boats. Now, you know, that's the research phase. I would say a good place to start is boat shows, right? Obviously, that's a place where there's all the boats side by side. So, you know, psychologically, it's easier to compare and contrast when the boats are sitting next to each other. I got another video there with, uh, we were showing some boats and there was a Van Dutch and, a, and I believe it was a Pardo right next to it. It was very convenient to see uh, the design side by side, right? Because you can see what you like about each one. Some people are, you know, they like European brands, for example. Some people, you know, let's say like Van Dutch's or Reba's or, so then you're gonna wanna stick to those. But if you're not necessarily like, you know, somebody who has gotten that far in boating and you, you know you like something so much and kind of like, the world's your oyster type of situation, then, you know, first of all, you got to get some experience, right? You got to, you got to walk on the boats and touch them, feel them, smell them, you know, use them a little bit. And in that way, you can kind of let yourself fall in love with the, not only the design, but the layout, right? How are you going to use the boat? You know, here in Miami, we do a lot of day boating for those of you who are not here. So, you know, the layouts are important in that case. Uh, you know, when we're going to Bahamas, like I said, you're going to want a lot more space. I think like a good place to start is Google, uh, YouTube. Uh, thanks for watching, by the way. <laughs> Subscribe, it really helps the channel. Boat shows are a good place to go. You know, so that's a great place to start. You can compare and contrast. You know, choosing the right broker, which is my next point, is going to play a major role in helping you find a boat. Now, consider, you know, say what you will about, you know, brokers, but, you know, real brokers, good brokers, this is what we do for a living. Uh, while you're at work busting your ass for eight to 10 hours a day doing what you do, uh, that's what your broker should be doing to study the market to know what's sold, how much it's sold for before, who owned the boat before, to go in the shipyards to see what kind of repairs were done. Has some dirt been swept under the rug, right? That type of stuff. You want to know that. Researching not only how are you going to use it, how are you going to keep the boat? Is it going to be behind your house? You have draft restrictions. Uh, is it in a marina? You know, budget is obviously a huge, you know, all of these things kind of all make up what your decision is going to be, right? Uh, so how do you choose the right broker? Hmm, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you found one right here, number one. But largely, I think, given what I said, you want somebody with a lot of experience because you, you need somebody who's got your back that is really doing a deep dive uh, in the history of the boat to know what's going on with it, what it's been through in its life. You know, going back to budget, are you buying it, you know, below, at, or above market price? You know, I think when you're deciding to buy a boat, I don't think it's really too important what the guy bought it before you uh, was because the markets always change. You know, obviously, it's a good thing to know. It's good negotiation point, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. You know, when you're choosing a broker, you also want somebody who has a really strong network in the yachting business itself. Not just somebody who knows a lot about boats, uh, but also somebody who knows a lot about the business, right? You want people to help you with your boat after you have it, right? You know, you need divers to come on to clean the bottom. You need somebody, uh, you know, who obviously knows how to drive the boat uh, or fix the boat if you have some kind of issue. Maybe you run aground, you ding a propeller, where are you going to bring it? Maybe it's got to go get some bottom paint up the river. You need somebody who can help you connect all those dots because, I mean, unless you're retired and you have all the time in the world, it's good to have somebody that you can rely on to take care of things because you really want a turnkey or worry-free boating experience. That's how you choose a broker because the guy that can deliver that to you, it's priceless, okay? It's really, it's just priceless because everything has enough problems as it is. You don't need more. This is a leisure activity. Boats are a reward for your success. So 
know, it should at no point in time ever, you know, hinder your uh, your your happiness, right? So moving along, I think, um, you know, viewing yachts, you know, after you set your goals, you research the yachts that you want, you find the broker to help you find the boats. Now, this guy is going to set up the appointments, make sure the boats are in their tip top condition to show. And then you get on board and spend some time, like look around, don't just open the cabinets. You know, you're going to look inside and see a bag of potato chips. That's not, you want to look under the floorboards, look in the engine room, things to look about, look after probably like, you know, you want to look for corrosion, rust, oil leaks, standing water, salt water. You can see like, you know, if there's like dried salt, stuff like that. Floorboards, like in the master cabin, uh, is there like that green corrosion around any of the, any of the fittings, you know, what kind of hoses do they use? Are they rubber hoses, plastic PVC hoses? Are they uh, metal, right? For example, that that's going to determine that that's going to be a good telltale of, you know, the quality of the build, right? You know, obviously metal is going to be a higher quality uh, and more expensive uh, build than uh, its plastic counterparts, right? So, you know, when you get on board, definitely look for stuff, you know, obviously the wear and tear and stuff, scratches, broken stuff like that, that, that all plays a key role in your initial negotiation, right? And then you got to get to making an offer. Now, this is the part that you really need to pay attention to because now you found your boat, you've looked at it, now it's time to make an offer, right? This is, you know, we're getting towards the later steps in buying a boat. Where do you come in at? This is a tricky thing. And this is where you rely on the broker to make offers for you because there's a lot of emotions that come to play when you're making an offer. And you have to be very uh, sensitive to that, right? The guy that's selling the boat, you don't know what situation he's in. Now, we all like to say, oh, this guy needs the money, this, that. You don't know. There's always gonna be the right boat for you. I would say that it's not always a good idea to come in super low because put yourself in his shoes, right? You list something for 10, right? The guy's like, I'll give you five. It's like, you wasted my time. Why did you even call my broker to have him take off the covers and set it up if you're just gonna, you know, pull my leg? Like, it's almost to the point where it's offensive and that in turn is gonna, make it might trigger the seller to like fire back. Okay, I listed it for 10, you'd offer five. Now it's 11, right? Like that's something I would do because you just wasted my time on a waste yours too. So the right thing to do, I think now, what you do is you take the mark, you take the price of the boat, you take an average of the comparables, which will determine like what the market value is or the market price. Now you want to shoot for at least a 10% discount off of that. Anything more than that, you're doing great. Anything less than that, you're probably not getting a great deal because there's a boat cheaper. I'm going to make a side note here. Your first offer is not your last offer. Okay. At least when you work with me, we got quite a few passes at this and I'll tell you how. Number one, you make the offer, you get a counter offer. You, maybe the guy's asking 10, you come in at a 7.5. The guy's like, hey, it's a little bit low. Yeah, I got you at nine, right? And so you say, think about it. Hey, look, I'm going to come and inspect the boat again. Uh, you know, there you go. Then you got another, another chance to make another offer. You're like, look, I'll be like seven, five, right? And so the guy's like, I'm going to stay firm at nine, right? And so now this is when you make a formal offer with a deposit because there's nothing like cash on the table, right? Money talks. So an offer is an offer. It doesn't really mean anything, but when you got money on the table, so now we go to survey, right? We're kind of far apart. We still need to come to a deal in order to get it to a survey. Now, don't worry because the guy says eight and a half. You're at eight. Look, go to the eight and a half and get the survey done because you're not far off. Once you get the survey done, just know almost never do boats survey perfectly. So there's always stuff to do. And here's the theory behind it. As long as you're buying a boat that's not overpriced and you get to a reasonable, like close enough on your negotiations, you beat them up in the survey. This thing needs to be changed. The manifold, this, the, there's a whole laundry list of stuff and everything has a price. And then you knock all those things off the price. So, hey, look, we got the survey back. The engine services need to be done. Okay, well, that's 25 grand. That's, 20, yeah. You need, you need eight new AC handlers, right? We've got some water damage on the portholes in the in the VIP cap. That costs something to repair. There's a tear in the bimini's. There's some tears in the cushions. You need reupholster. There's a lot of stuff. My point is, now you got the guy at eight and a half. Now you're close to almost accepting the boat. This is where you can still walk away. Basically, you say, hey, look, you're at eight and a half. I'm at eight. There's about, you know, 2.5 of stuff to do. You got to credit me that we meet somewhere in the middle. Any reasonable human being should take that offer because the guy knows he's going to have to fix the stuff himself and then go through this whole process again. And he might, there might not be another buyer down there, right? And that's what his broker needs to do to convince his guy to, to meet halfway. And then we all need to make it halfway. I mean, look, here's the deal. If the boat surveys perfectly, then what do you need a better deal for? You got a perfect boat. I mean, that's like a, that's a steal in its own, in its own right anyway. At that point, I think, you know, whatever happens, happens. So let's say you guys want to meet in the middle, eight, two, five.
five, we've got a deal. The guy fixes the stuff or credits you. And so when you take delivery, you fix it yourself because you got a trusty captain. You got a broker you can rely on to help you get the job done for cheaper than what it was actually quoted for in the beginning. Now that's a really good one. What do you do when you close the deal? There's a whole nother video I can make about this. Let me know in the comments if you want to know, but you close the deal, you close the deal. We get everybody involved. We get the documentation involved. If you want to rename the boat, you can rename it and off we go. Those are the steps and what it takes to buy a boat from start to finish. Let me know if there's any part of this video that you want me to embellish on or expand on. There's a lot more to it than this, but there's only so much I could do in, you know, the few minutes that we have in each of these videos. Thanks again for watching, guys. Please subscribe. It really helps for the channel. Share with your friends and hit that subscribe button so you know when the next video comes out.